day. Uh, we would like to thank our very gracious hosts, uh, the city here, for allowing us to use this space, um, not only where we get to sit, but the technology that allows us to stream in all of you who are joining us online. So thank you, thank you. So good to see so many of your faces and have this time together. So to kick us off, um, I would just like to, um, again, we, we thank our hosts, and we'd also like to thank our host, United Way, uh, for sponsoring this event and helping us to make it possible, um, and for the Emerging Leaders Team. Um, there's been some really wonderful things that have happened because of a group of people coming together uh, to invest their time in the work of United Way and investing in the community, uh, and it's a joy to be a part of that. Uh, just a few highlights for some fun things that have happened um, through United Way. Oh. That must, maybe that's our, our virtual attendees. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, just some great things that have happened through emerging leaders um, in the past year that I'd love to share with you. Um, over 300 children's books were donated through the Emerging Leaders Book Drive. Um, over 50 participants in the Emerging Leaders Family Fun Run that we hosted on August 7th um, at Nourish. Our 300 volunteer hours provided by the Emerging Leaders Steering Committee on the 21 uh, day of caring, and then over $11,000 donated in just the past year. Um, so that's a really uh, wonderful thing, and um, you all get to be a part of that celebration and continuing work by being here today. So uh, with that, I would like to jump right in to our panel. Uh, very excited to have these wonderful guests uh, with us today. Uh, not only um, for the role that they play in the community, um, but for their heart for the individuals um, that we get to all serve every day. So um, it's a joy to have you three. Welcome, welcome. Um, we're going to start with uh, just some basic introductions. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing your name, uh, the company that you represent, and then how long you've been in Sheboygan County. Um, and then I'm going to throw a little bonus in there. It's a beautiful day. You've got all the time you need. Where would we find you in Sheboygan County? So we'll start with Louis. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Louis Gentine. I'm a third generation uh, CEO at Sargento Foods. The company was founded by my grandfather back in 1953. I'm happy to be here uh, with all of you present and also those uh, virtually. Um, Sheboygan County at this time of the year, um, I, you would really, if I wasn't here and I wasn't at work, I'd be sitting in a tree stand. So oh. I'd be bow hunting. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Janine? Hi, I'm Janine Cheesebro. I'm a senior project leader at Kohler Company, where I've been for about four and a half years now. I've lived in Sheboygan ooh, 12 years. I married a, a Sheboyganer, so here I am. Um, let's see, if I weren't here today, mm -hmm. I'd probably be with my kids at a soccer game or hiking or playing outside somewhere. Love that. Favorite spot to hike? Ooh. We love Maywood. Okay. Oh, nothing better, especially this time of year. Matt? Good afternoon. My name is Matt O'Connor. I'm the Vice President of Supply Chain at Rockline Industries. I've been in uh, with Rockline for 18 years. I've been in Sheboygan County for eight of those years. Um, and where would I be? I would either be in the Kettles, uh, taking a hike, or maybe... Uh, in a duck blind boat in the Sheboygan Marsh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Wonderful. My name is Johanna Wenig, um, and I serve as the director of the foundation at HSHS St. Nicholas Hospital, um, and I've been here in Sheboygan for about five years. Um, and yeah, I hiking, gone along bike ride, run, so many beautiful spots to see, um, again, especially this time of year. So, wonderful. <clears throat> well, welcome. Thank you for the investment of time and all being here today. Um, we have one big goal for today in this panel, uh, which is to share meaningful philanthropic work that has happened in Sheboygan County with a special focus on sustainable partnership. Um, and the reason why we have asked each of these individuals to join us today is um, they individually, as well as uh, the organizations that they represent, have invested in incredibly meaningful ways um, for generations. Um, and specifically in some really uh, special ways in the past uh, two years. Um, and so we're kind of going to time capsule that and um, look and celebrate at some of the really wonderful things um, that have happened and use that as inspiration stepping forward. So um, I'm going to launch a couple questions um, that emerging leaders have prepared, um, and then we will have time for Q&A at the end. So please uh, tag those and be ready to ask. So 
I'm going to start, uh, we're going to go back uh, in the timeline. Um, and Louis, I'm going to start with you. I'm just curious from your perspective and your role as a CEO of a, of a massive organization, where did your mind go when you first heard about COVID-19? Um, did you have any inkling on not just the community impact, but worldwide impact um, on, your Im on your employees, the community as a whole? Like, where did your mind go when yeah, well, you first heard? I think uh, as many people, when you first started hearing about COVID-19, it was one of kind of disbelief. Um, you just really didn't know um, what to believe. Is this real? Is this really going to impact um, us here in the United States, or is this just uh, something that's happening outside of the United States? And obviously, very quickly, um, we realized that, you know, we were, as a country and as a, a business, going to be faced with a very, very hard challenge. And um, the immediate thing was to try and figure out how we could continue to keep our employees safe. Um, you know, this was this was real, um, and as a food company, we were continuing to um, package food and cheese for consumers being part of the, the food supply. Um, so the, being an essential workplace with essential workers, um, you know, we immediately kind of put a crisis team together, um, which is not a crisis team that you would think that you would have to put it together. Um, but, uh, you know, that team, that group of people from HR, health professionals, and ultimately other representatives, even from other companies in the area, immediately started to kind of work on strategies of how we could first and foremost is keep our employees safe. Mm -hmm. um, the impact of, of COVID, um, you know, I still kind of look back to those early months and when you saw um, businesses completely shut down restaurants um, completely shut down. It was really, um, it was really sad because you could personally, you could see the impact that this was having and this was at no fault of their own. This was just something that was just thrown onto them. Um, and so that was really hard, but was, was also um, kind of refreshing and kind of made you feel good about living in Sheboygan County is this community rallied um, in such a huge way. Uh, companies, individuals, um, helping uh, businesses that were in a bad spot kind of help get them through this. Um, you know, everybody started, restaurant industry, everybody started to do takeout. I mean, the number of takeout orders that my wife and our, my family did during that time, I mean, far and exceeded how often we go out to dinner. <laughs> um, but it was the right thing to do um, because we wanted to do our, our part of, of, of helping people through that. So um, I think, you know, COVID is a challenge. Um, it still is a challenge, quite frankly. Um, I think this area, these companies, our community, I think has done a really good job kind of managing through it. And I think, you know, from the, uh, you as emerging leaders, um, kind of learning and hearing about Sheboygan County, you should be very proud to be um, in this community because it is uh, a, a, a very, very giving community. Mm -hmm. That's very true. You know, Louie, when we started to, just like you're talking about this impact and how it started to, when things shut down and, and different members of our community were impacted, you know, from, from my vantage point, there were so many systems when it came to our social services that had a very strong place to be able to serve our community, um, specifically in the area of food security. Mm -hmm. um, and Sargento has been a huge part of that. Can you share a little bit about the work that Sargento did way before 2020 ever came um, to work with the food bank and in general that concept within Sheboygan County? Yeah, so um, food has been one of our kind of major areas of giving back to our community, and we've had a long, long-term partnership um, with the Hunger Task Force down in Milwaukee. And, um, you know, so in understanding that organization and how they work, um, you know, down in the southeast Wisconsin, but then also how they help distribute food really throughout the entire state through the Wisconsin Food Network, um, you know, it dawned on me and a few other business leaders in this area that, you know, we didn't really have a, an efficient system on how to distribute food 
and get food to people um, that were kind of food insecure. Um, we have a number of different pantries kind of located throughout the, the, throughout the county, um, but very few um, really took the idea of how do you address the food insecurity problem. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that, you know, I had seen work very well with the hunger task force is, is make sure you provide food to those people that need it. But then how do you start to address that root cause of why they're in the position that they're in? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, Patrick at the Sheboygan County Food Bank um, has just done a wonderful job of kind of uh, bringing the food pantry network together to um, figure out ways to distribute food efficiently, um, uh, utilize our resources in our community um, more effectively, and then ultimately be able to continue giving those people who are food insecure that opportunity to, to receive you know, a basic need of, of food. Um, through COVID, it was really kind of remarkable, and I, I think uh, having the um, the food bank as it is today around to handle the dramatic increase mm -hmm. in uh, the requirements to address the problem. The, the U.S., uh, the government's food box program, mm -hmm. um, Patrick and his team at the food bank helped orchestrate and kind of put that all together and make sure that we could distribute that out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know what we would have done. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look back at it and you, I know we would have figured it out. Right. But you know, having that um, that group, uh, I think, really helped us be able to again kind of do what we needed to do to to get resources and basic necessities to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah very much so. Yeah, it it was um, incredible to see the investment that was made before we ever knew that this crisis was going to come. Yeah. To really, just like you're saying, the engine was built and it was working really well. And when that added weight came, um, it was really incredible. So yeah, thank you for that. Joanna, can I just add one other yes. thing? You know, uh, we had some thought leaders within this community mm -hmm. that stepped forward very early. Mm -hmm. And I, I look at what the United Way staff had done. March 16th, mm -hmm. they started the fund. Mm -hmm. Think about the timing. I mean, that was only two weeks into this craziness. Mm -hmm. They put together a fund because they saw uh, a, the need, and, and they're, they're a good thought leadership type of mm -hmm. community thinkers. And they raised over $285,000 in just a very short period of time and got that money into the community very quickly. And... Uh, and so, you know, I, I just keep applauding that, yes. and that effort was was very instrumental. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Actually, Matt, if we can continue on that sure. same line of thought, yeah, you actually had a key role in being able to distribute some of those funds, um, yeah. being on the distribution team. Right. Can you tell us about your experience, both before being on that committee and then during COVID, how you saw those funds move? Yeah, yeah. great question. Um, I've been part of that uh, distribution group for a couple of years, even That's prior great. to COVID. And that experience has been uh, immeasurable for me personally to really understand the needs of the community and uh, to kind of open your eyes a little bit to what's really going on because mm -hmm. you're not exposed to it all. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of programs that people are very well, well aware of, you know, the food banks and, you know, the Red Cross and, and uh, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, doing really amazing things in this community. There are two programs, though, that kind of speak to me that are less known. And I thought, just give it a minute or two uh, to share with the emerging leaders and those that are watching virtually about them. And, and the first one that uh, really speaks to me is uh, through the Family Resource Center. And the Family Resource Center has a program called Parents as Teachers. And the, the notion of that program is to, uh, to work with parents on a monthly basis mm -hmm. going into the home and teaching them how to teach their child, how to put them on a developmental curve so that when they enter kindergarten, mm -hmm. they're where they need to be. Mm -hmm. 
And there are parents that just don't know how to do that. And, and sadly, those that don't create a cycle of people that are, of children that are not prepared mm -hmm. and then struggle at school. And when you struggle in, in first grade, typically struggle in sixth and 12th, and then there's issues. So if you can break the cycle, mm -hmm. if you can teach these children how to, you know, stack blocks or, mm -hmm. or know your numbers or whatever. And, and so this program that we distribute money to, mm -hmm. um, a sizable amount of money to pay for the people to go into the homes to do this is, is just an amazing program. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it speaks to me. And I, as emerging leaders, there's going to be a program or two that will speak to you too. And, and that will kind of warm your heart and tell you, hey, I, I need to get involved. Mm -hmm. I need to help. The, the second one that is, l is less known that I just want to make you aware of that speaks to me is uh, at the Lakeshore uh, Regional si uh, Child Advocacy, Advocacy Center. This program provides forensic interviews mm -hmm. for children that have been abused. And what's amazing about this program is sadly a child is abused, right? Gosh, terrible. But what this program does is it coordinates with the legal system, the police system, the, the, the doctor system, mm -hmm. so that the child has to be interviewed once hmm. and go through that trauma, unfortunately, a second time. But it's all recorded, done by trained people that know how to ask the questions, that know what's gonna happen in the coming months in the court systems and so mm -hmm. forth to prosecute this and not put that child through it again right. and again and again. And so amazing program and uh, another one of those that you know, we, we need to fund mm -hmm. in order to you know, help those children to only experience that trauma sadly once or maybe in, in, and explain it another time. Mm -hmm. So two really great programs. So, so as the distribution team, you get to know the details. You immerse mm -hmm. yourselves into the details of these programs. Mm -hmm. and, you and you find those that are really effective, mm -hmm. are, that, that result in great outcomes, and um, and that's where you want to put your money. You don't want people don't want to not you know they want to put their money, their hard-earned money on, on programs that are effective. And the distribution team does that work, mm -hmm. studies them empirically, understands how they're effective, what works and what doesn't work, and um, and then utilizes that money to fund those programs. And and uh, and so that's what the distribution team does, and it's a privilege to have participated on that, and I encourage any of you to mm -hmm. engage it. It's, it is decided by the volunteers. This is not a staff decision process. This is a volunteer uh, decision and what's best for the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is wonderful. Thank you for that time that you've invested in. Yeah, going through the data and the organizations and being a true champion yeah. of not just making sure those funds get there, but that those funds are used in a, a really powerful way. So um, I, I know all four of us could speak on the point of the power that it is when you are able to get involved in the community at um, such a ground level. Um, it's really a front row seat to some of the best things that happen um, that I know for me, if I just stay in my office and do all of my to-do list items, I miss out on some of the inspiration um, and the true heartwarming change that that is happening. So yeah, that's that's your plug for for getting involved, and if you're looking for ways, I'm sure anyone with the United Way logo can uh, point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually, um, so personally, we understand the value of, of being involved and having this attitude of you know, philanthropy and, and you know, really building into our community. Um, I'm gonna start this question with you, Matt, but I'd be curious, uh, Janine and Louie, if you'd like to add as well. Um, the idea of how to um, merge this personal uh, passion with the work that you do every day in your organizations. Mm. Um, I know Rockline is known for some of the fun events that are hosted that support United Way. Mm -hmm. um, Louis, when I was at the Day of Caring, I feel like every other person was from Sargento <laughs> that I was saying hello to, and they just showed up um, on that day. And Kohler is always the hearts for the hungry. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but how do you make this 
personal passion, something that's actually part of your organization in a meaningful way, um, more than just the corporate social responsibility, the CSR, how do we actually make it a part of things that we love as a, a business? Yeah, we spend a lot of time at work, right? All of us mm -hmm. do, and at Rockline, we, we want to have a little fun while we're working hard, right? And, and sprinkle that in. And so we do have fun little events that, that uh, allows us to relax for a minute, but also the, the real basis behind it is to educate them, to educate the associates about what is happening in the community. What's the needs of the community? The mm -hmm. stories I just shared would be an example of that, that people are like, really? Mm -hmm. United Way does that? And, and there are needs for this? And, and so you sprinkle fun, you sprinkle, you know, uh, you know, shooting basketball hoops and, you know, in, a, in an indoor hoop or contests to get free vacation days or whatever it is. But, but the point is to, to educate. Mm -hmm. and, and so you take the passion of how good uh, the United Way is doing and you teach them about it but have some fun while doing it. And the associates win. United Way wins. Community wins. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's, how our, that's how we view it. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Do you have something to add? Sure. <clears throat> so, you know, we know that purpose is important to our associates, and more than ever, as the younger generation keeps entering the workforce, it's more and more increasingly important for our associates. And so we try to find ways to connect them with the purpose of our company. Mm -hmm. um, but we also look to our associates to tell us what's important to them and how we can support their passions. Mm -hmm. Um, a really interesting program that we have at Kohler is Innovation for Good, and that's where we allow or invite associates to brainstorm solutions to some of the larger global problems that are out there. So for instance, last year was all around clean water and sanitation. And so mm -hmm. groups of associates, whether you're an engineer or not, teams from any department could come together, propose business solutions, they presented them to leadership, and then teams were selected and given funding and time to work on those ideas. So that's just mm -hmm an example of a way that we try to harness the expertise and passion of our associates mm -hmm. to connect with kind of the bigger purpose of our company. Mm. That is yeah. awesome. Okay. Okay. I'd just build a little bit on uh, what Matt <coughs> says uh, said regarding kind of the education side. And that goes to our employees, the Star General family, understanding kind of some of our core business philosophies that, mm -hmm. that we hold that my grandfather started. So. I understood the importance of community because that's how I was raised. That's how I was brought up. And, um, you know, my grandfather, when he started, he immediately um, needed the community in order to do what he wanted to do. Hmm. So it was his way of immediately trying to start to give back as, as fast as he could. I'm just real quick. He had to ask the city of Plymouth or to, to rent space in the basement of the Plymouth post office you know, to be packaging cheese and back in his, his <laughs> early days. So <laughs> if that is not kind of the community kind of coming together to kind of help a guy out, I don't, I don't know what is. <laughs> but um, the community to this day remains a very key stakeholder. And so we do everything that we can to help inform and let our employees know the importance of what community is to mm -hmm. our organization, but also to their livelihood. Mm -hmm. That's where they're living. That's where they're raising a family. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's where they're, they're finding their balance in life. And without that strong community, um, you don't have that. It mm -hmm. makes it hard to recruit people as a business. It makes it difficult to raise a family in the way that people want to raise their family. Um, so giving back is, is just a piece of it, financially mm -hmm. giving back. But providing people that opportunity to engage in a number of different nonprofit organizations in this mm -hmm. area, um, I think is critically important because mm -hmm. they become more entrenched in the community itself. Mm -hmm. um, so offering the opportunity for day of caring, offering <clears throat> the flexibility for people to use kind of their um, kind of free hours to uh, coach basketball or to volunteer at the Salvation Army mm -hmm. or to be a, a big, um, you know, for big brothers, big sisters. Those are all things that, you know, I think are important because it allows people to kind of find where their passion is. It helps people find that balance in life 
so that they're not just sitting at their desk all the time. Mm -hmm. And they, to, to, um, to what was also said, it also allows them to find, you know, their sense of purpose mm -hmm. um, at an individual level, but then also support, you know, the purpose of, of the organization, what the organization expects of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Well, and I know many of the faces in this room, I know we are friends from the nonprofit space and the boards and the fundraising committees that we all form, many of your associates and colleagues. Um, thank you for that freedom of time that your organizations give to allow them to serve within these nonprofits. It's really, um, yeah, very, very powerful to have that workforce. So, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Janine, I'd I'd like to pass the mic to you <laughs> okay. um, and chat a little bit about um, Kohler and the work that you all do with United Way. And um, I just want to give a huge praise. Kohler was one of the very first companies to step forward this fund that Matt was talking about and um, that started on uh, March 16th. Um, Kohler is one of the very first ones to step forward um, and give very generously to that. And Kohler is a massive organization. <laughs> what? are some of the things that are part of the fabric of Kohler that makes you so agile to be able to respond to that need so quickly? Great, thanks Johanna. Mm -hmm. Well, when it came to responding to COVID-19, I think there were a couple of factors at play. And the first, I think would say established partnerships. So Kohler has a long, long history with the United Way of Sheboygan County. Over the last 15 years, it's been over $6 million from Kohler Associates mm -hmm. and the company. So there's that trust, there's that relationship there. If you have to build a relationship on day one of a crisis, mm -hmm. it's a stressful experience for the organization and it just does not go well. So mm -hmm. having this established partnership and relationship in place allowed us to hit the ground running mm -hmm. and creating solutions and to providing additional support. Mm -hmm. I would also say um, we have leadership support. So the very small team that I sit on reports up to Laura Kohler and then ultimately David Kohler. And the message from day one is that healthy communities matter and we're empowered to make those choices and to move quickly when mm -hmm. crisis strikes. So we have their support from day one in order to make those additional investments. Mm -hmm. And then I'd also say our associates are so passionate. Um, we were all personally experiencing COVID-19 and what it meant for our families, but Associates were reaching out to our department asking how they could help. What could they do to support both their fellow associates, but the community at large? And so having the COVID-19 Relief Fund as an avenue that we could support and to direct associates was really um, poignant for us. And we mm -hmm. raised over $20,000 from our associates towards that fund. So, wow. Yeah. wow, that is awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about Harvest for the Hungry? I know this has been a tradition for many, many years, um, but I also like to hear about how you guys got really creative mm. during 2020 as well to still make that tradition happen. <laughs> yes. So the Harvest for Hungry, if you haven't participated in the past, is a community meal that's served by volunteers and is ultimately a fundraiser for the United Way of Sheboygan County. I believe it started back in around 2012, so a little over 10 years ago, and there were a couple of different factors at play at the time. Mm -hmm. um, one, Different nonprofit organizations were approaching restaurants within Destination Kohler looking for either donations or to set up opportunities to donate a portion of proceeds to different causes. And it just became really overwhelming for that business to field all those requests and decide what to do. Um, the other thing that was happening at that same time is we were looking for a way to engage our hospitality associates with the United Way. So it's an hourly workforce. Some are full-time, some part-time, mm -hmm. so they haven't has been en as engaged as other members in the past. And so this provided a really unique opportunity. Leadership decided they wanted one signature event for mm -hmm. hospitality that allowed associates to volunteer and to give back. Mm -hmm. It kind of coalesced around the infrastructure already being in place around food and wine, which happens in October. Mm -hmm. And so it, it all kind of came together that that mm -hmm. was the opportunity for associates to prepare and serve a meal and raise money for the United Way. Mm -hmm. So I think it is since the beginning, it's raised over $120,000 and over 10,000 meals have been served. And in 2020, mm -hmm. the pivot was to doing a drive through event so that um, participants drove through the lower level of the American Club and meals were placed in people's trunks and over mm -hmm. 700 meals were served last year that way. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is incredible. 
just a testament to our hospitality associates who, in addition to that event, also prepared and served meals for fellow <coughs> hospitality associates as well, which is really amazing how they came together. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so cool. And just speaks to the creativity that was uh, mandatory for 2020, <laughs> <laughs> especially, yeah, I see shaking heads of my uh, fellow nonprofit um, people in the room of, yeah, how we had to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, St. Nick's also hosted our traditional gala as a drive through and um, we had a massive uh, semi-truck from Sargento to keep all the food cold, and, um, you know, Kohler made delicious raspberry Linzer cookies for us to put in the boxes, and LTC, it was just, it was a whole collaboration, and what we find with that kind of forced creativity is that's where some really cool innovation happens, and, um, yeah, I feel like we're still in that creative innovation space and I hope that continues because it challenges itself to do to do better. So that's wonderful. Wonderful. Well, um, what I'd like to do is uh, we'll jump into a little bit of a Q&A time and I'll give you all some time to organize your thoughts and your questions. Uh, we have a mic that will be uh, passed around. So if you have a question, you can just um, raise your hand and we will come to you. Um, if you're online, please drop your question um, into the chat box um, and our team is monitoring that box and we'll ask uh, that question for you. So um, I'll give you all a second to, to put those thoughts together and I'll just ask one more question, which um, you know we've, we've touched on this in a variety of ways, um, but the question is just why United Way uh, for you personally um, and, and for your organization, why, why does United Way get um, such a designated spot in your philanthropy. Um, so can we start with you, Louis? Sure. I'm gonna steal Matt's two words, uh, community thinkers. Um, I have always told individuals who are looking to provide an opportunity to give um, to an organization that the United Way is by far um, the best one to do that uh, because they have their finger on the needs of the community. And um, I think it's so very important to have an organization that is just at the central core of understanding kind of the needs um, because it's like the hub and then everything kind of starts to roll right around it. And that's why um, I like the United Way. That's why my wife likes the United Way. That's why it is the only um, campaign where we do every year where we match dollar for dollar and employees' contributions uh, to the United Way, um, and it's it's been successful. Um, but it only happens because of what the United Way does. Um, I think of uh, Matt gave two great examples of some great programs that you know came through the United Way. One of my favorite is the PATH program, mm -hmm. you know, performing access to uh, to healing, you know, putting <clears throat> counselors in each and every school here in Sheboygan County, all districts, to have an opportunity for um, a child to be able to get the help that they need, to provide that access for them is, I think, so critical, especially in today's world of just the, um, the increasing number of mental health challenges that, that people are facing. That program doesn't go unless the United Way had a pulse and was listening to what was going on in the county. What would have happened if it didn't? You would have had disparate kind of organizations trying to do a good job, but not do it very well. Bring it together, bring the resources together, organize it, and then um, implement it throughout the community. And, and that's, that's what makes United Way great. Thank you. Matt, what about you? Uh, yeah. It, Community thinkers is important. Um, I like the fact that they're agnostic. Mm -hmm. They choose the community, the, they understand the needs. Mm -hmm. They then understand what the agencies and the programs are out there. They then measure and manage those programs from afar, making sure that the impact that they're having is real, mm -hmm. that they bring them to collaborate with other agencies together. Mm -hmm. So there is, they're efficient because money isn't being spent on solving the same problem in four places. It's in one place and they're working together to solve it. Mm -hmm. So it's efficiency, it's a collaboration, it's agnosticness, uh, and it's thinking. Mm -hmm. 
that uh, makes United Way very effective. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. Janine? Well, I echo so much <laughs> of what Lizzie and Matt had to say. You know, at, at Polar, our team says, like, if we didn't have a United Way, we would want a United Way because mm -hmm. both personally and professionally, the amount of knowledge and coordination and effort that goes into understanding the community and coordinating the efforts of the various nonprofits um, is beyond the reach of me and my personal time and then mm -hmm. also our small team professionally. So there's absolute trust there mm -hmm. um, that they'll be good stewards of the money, that they'll measure the impact and make sure that the money's being used efficiently. So mm -hmm. that's why United Way. Yeah, that is excellent. I'm, I'm a, I tend to be analytical. People say I'm a little bit a nerd, but um, <laughs> j just think, think about the following. 22,000 therapy sessions mm -hmm. were given to kids last year at school, having mm -hmm. access to that. 74,000 meals being provided to the elderly and homebound mm -hmm. last year. 26,000 nights of shelter was provided last year. That's 75 people a day, think about it, do the math. Mm -hmm. But you know it's not even. You know the colder months, it's much. So think about hun hundreds mm -hmm. each night. Um, 5,000 families each month are provided emergency food. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's uh, you know, it's food, it's health, it's mental health, mm -hmm. it's financial uh, stability, mm -hmm. it's education. That's what these guys do, and and you know the the the, the staff are in touch mm -hmm. and are are very good thinkers about w and sensors as to what the community needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. And Matt, thanks for bringing those numbers because it's still hard to wrap our arms around that, but it puts. Um, some faces to some of the needs that we know exist. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I am guilty of, I go same roads, same schedule. I'm a very routine person. And sometimes you just miss out on, wow, that, there are that many people in our community who are impacted by this specific need. And to know that there's an army that's going after that and, and meeting those needs is, is very encouraging. So yeah, thank you for those answers. Can I got one more thing? Yes, please. You know, we, 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 we talk a lot about United Way but the real foot soldiers are the agencies, mm -hmm. right? And they're, they're you know, very mm -hmm. focused and on their problem, which mm -hmm. is great. But, and, but they're the foot soldiers mm -hmm. that make it all happen. And the United Way kind of helps bring it together. So we, we mm -hmm. can't understate mm -hmm. the importance of what those, mm -hmm. what those agencies, you know, 23 agencies, uh, 39 programs mm -hmm. were funded through United Way, and but so uh, thanks off to right. the agencies and all mm -hmm. the work they do. Yeah, which that's one of my very favorite things about how the Day of Caring is formed, mm -hmm. is you're getting into the doors of these agencies that mm -hmm. we get to support. And um, this year I got to go out to Camp Evelyn. I had never, I wasn't a Girl Scout and never got to go to camp there, didn't really know the work that they did. And it was just so fun seeing head shaking from those who were pulling out entire trees with me <laughs> and doing, uh, it was supposed to be light gardening and it was some pretty heavy yard work, which is good, we needed it. Obviously there was some stress that needed to be reduced. So um, it was really very cool, but we're getting to the doors of, of organizations that otherwise I might not have come across um, their purpose. So any other thoughts before we jump into Q&A? Okay, uh, let's dive in. Does anyone have some specific questions? It can be for the entire panel for someone specifically. The speaker, I've got a mic. <laughs> Hi. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you to you and your organization for all the amazing things you've done and um, the great um, definition of United Way and all the amazing things United Way has done. Um, uh, my question is, I see that you touched on like um, food and those basic needs and child advocacy and clean water, which is all like so fantastic. And as we know, we can keep going. 
Um, so one thing that I'm aware of is uh, uh, safe and affordable housing hmm. um, and the lack of, lack of that housing. So how would you, or do you have any suggestions or ideas or are your organizations open to the idea of kind of pushing forward on making that more accessible for Sheboygan County? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I can take that one. Um, the answer to your question is uh, uh, yes, there's a lot of um, uh, resources going against right now. How can we bring more affordable housing to, to the county? Um, it's complicated. It's not as easy as just, you know, putting a shovel in the ground. Um, but uh, there is a recognized need and actually through um, Adam Payne's office at the county level, um, he has made a, a kind of like an affordable housing task force um, that is uh, currently looking at avenues to, um, to get it going. Um, unfortunately, that's not a flip of a light switch and ta-da, now you have 300 homes. Um, but uh, it is good uh, to see the energy and the focus on that area. And um, there's no doubt in my mind that this, this community is going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, Louis, the task force that you're referring to, um, that a huge shout out to the county board and the way that they are developing that. Um, I, I don't want to step out of line, but I, I believe that we are one of the only counties who, and actually Elaine, I see here in the room, uh, can confirm, one of the only counties that's choosing to um, move these ARPA dollars through a task force committee type function versus just the decision being made and the dollars, the check being signed, um, which really shows the collaboration um, and yet the right minds in the room to make that happen. So yeah, thank you for, for highlighting that. More questions? Can you just say your name and where you're from too? It just would be helpful. Yes, hi, my name is Amanda Ecker from Johnsonville. And one of the questions I have for you guys is we have a large population of members who work in our plant facilities and we would like to allow them opportunities to volunteer during work time, mm -hmm. but have not found a great way to do that. So do you guys have any recommendations for Johnsonville? And I'm sure maybe there are other companies that have the same challenge as well. From a volunteer perspective. Well, I'm gonna get the, um, like the terminology wrong, I'm sure, but we, um, for our individuals who work in manufacturing, their ability to use kind of um, hours. So they don't have to take a full day off, they can take an hour off. Um, where that allows them to maybe break away and like I had mentioned before, you know, coach a soccer practice or a basketball team or to um, get out er a little bit early to, to do it. So they get, um, I don't, I'm not even going to tell you how many hours because I don't know, but, you know, that was something that we added to allow people the opportunity to kind of um, do something without having to take an entire day of vacation or paid time off. Our, our view is um, more on the education side. We need to help our associates understand the needs of the community, as we talked about earlier. And once you understand it, the work occurs. The, the, it, you're touched, the, the individual is touched in one way or another, within United Way or outside United Way, doesn't matter. And they, they go and take action to, to help the community. So it's awareness that we are working on because things aren't happening because they're unaware. Mm -hmm. so if you make them aware, then things do happen and things change. So that's kind of our take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, great question. More questions? Do we have any questions coming in from online? No? Feel free to type those into the chat box to. More questions? Mm -hmm. Hello, I am 
I'm Roberta Fuller Kamineski, mm -hmm. and I'm an alder person in District 2 for the city of Sheboygan. Yeah. And from the perspective of the agencies, um, I'm interested in days of caring when you mm -hmm. furlough X number of employees to do X, Y, Z, or ABC. Um, have you given thoughts to, I know for the organization it is also a, for your businesses, it's also a team building exercise, mm -hmm. but have you given thoughts to distributing two volunteers at a time consistently rather mm -hmm. than 14 of them on one day? That's a great question. Um, I know that leans into maybe a little bit more of the logistics of Day of Caring, uh, which I unfortunately can't speak very much to because I'm not United Way staff. Um, but I I know that Day of Caring is kind of a, it's one, the kickoff to the it's campaign. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's a big day of celebration and, and launching that. Um, but I wouldn't say that that's, I mean, I know many organizations, I don't know if any of you have experience with the consistency, but I know many organizations have volunteers, whether they're serving on boards, you know, every single month or, you know, fundraising councils or task forces within different organizations. Um, I know there's a lot of consistency. Uh, I know from all of these organizations um, and many others um, in the community that serve on that basis. Do you all have a thought on? Yeah, my, my thought is that seems to fit more under the volunteer center of the United Way where agencies can post uh, at no cost of what their needs are and tie people that want to volunteer to do various things. And those things can be on a weekly basis, a daily basis, a monthly basis, however, as, as an individual or as group. So I think that's probably where that type of agency need, where I would go if I were to coach an agency where to go, I would tell them, reach out to the volunteer center and uh, they'll get the resources uh, that they're, they're looking for. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good add. And then, you know, then I think it just happens um, on its own within an organization. Um, we have a group that, you know, uh, before COVID was every... Wednesday night was serving at Salvation Army. Um, every month, a group of different employees uh, go down to Milwaukee to St. Ben's um, Community Meal uh, Program um, where we kind of rotate it through departments. So I, I do agree with Matt. It, it's gotta be orchestrated from the organizations and the volunteer center is a great way to kind of help get people in the right area, and then, as we've said numerous times, then the volunteer work I think just kind of happens. You know, so you might get an HR department that, you know, has a passion for this group, and mm -hmm. you know what, they're going to commit to once a month, um, mm -hmm. where a few of them might go help out. Uh, Big brothers, big sisters. That's a very consistent mm -hmm. volunteer program. Um, you know where. You know, people are, uh, you know, signing up to be a big and um, once a month they're going into the schools and they're meeting with uh, their big and oftentimes it's more than that because they just, they love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. More questions? I have one that came in virtually as well. Perfect. This is from Patrick Boyle with the Food Bank. Oh, hey, Patrick. <laughs> he is asking, do the companies that give so generously ever try and convince nonprofits to partner and collaborate with other nonprofits if they think it would make sense, or is that something they try and stay away from? Hmm. So suggesting collaboration for nonprofits that they support? Correct. Great question. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll answer it, and I, I've actually talked to Patrick numerous times about it. I, I think you have to start kind of almost not requiring, but highly encouraging the collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, because if we, if we don't at least ask the question and try and bring people to the table, I, we just will not be as efficient with, um, with our resources, both our human resources of finding volunteers, but then also the financial ones as well. So mm -hmm. um, 
Patrick knows, I'm he because <laughs> I ask him that all the time. Um, mm -hmm. I asked him, you know, before he wants to start a, a program, like, well, have you talked to this organization and, and vice versa? Um, you know, we've made a point specifically on the food-related side. All of our food donations go to the she uh, Sheboygan County Food Bank. Um, and then in individual pantries or a backpack program, or if they come to us and ask for food, we send them right to Patrick's door and say, that's where it's all going. That's an example of trying to bring some, um, I guess, some efficiency and then some just better execution of, mm -hmm. of the needs, um, I think is, is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think United Way actually plays in this space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They drive collaboration. In fact, they, they give one of their criterion in their fund distribution is their effectiveness to collaborate with others. Mm -hmm. and, and, and don't start a program that this guy already has. No, mm -hmm. work with them. Mm -hmm. And so, so uh, you know, from a business perspective, I don't think we have the visibility of understanding all the programs in the community. Mm -hmm. And so we rely on the community experts, in, in this case, uh, United Way to to then drive the collaboration. And Gina, does that does that feel right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. ask questions though as business leaders. Of course, right? that's what you, we you want you, efficiency. You wanna you ask the question to help, right. you know, get people out of just kind of their their one mindset and say, oh yeah, look at mm -hmm. here, right? And then to your earlier point, it's all about educating. So mm -hmm. it's right. not only educating the community; it's educating each of the different agencies of what each other does, mm -hmm. right, um, so, right. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is so good. The duplication of services sends shivers down all of our spines, that, you know, people doing the same thing and, you know, we can see those connections of doing better together and, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I appreciate that, that perspective. Uh, we are rolling into the last couple minutes um, and so I'm gonna have one more question from the audience and then a um, couple things to wrap us up, John? Hi, I'm John Rogers. I'm the roundtable facilitator for Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, and I've done close to 500 of those roundtables, mm -hmm. starting at the end of 2007. And I could tell you all kinds of collaborations that have happened as a result of the various roundtables. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I like to talk about is we live in a land of silos, mm -hmm. but we can't live in those silos. We have to go out and talk to people and find out. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And uh, the more we talk to each other, the more often we're gonna find out about different programs and how we can work together. If you don't know about the Chamber Roundtables, let me know, please. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing I would add about silos is I feel like each organization also isn't working in a silo, so for instance, like we know that housing is a cornerstone, but people who have struggle finding housing may also struggle finding healthcare mm -hmm. and may also be food insecure. So being able mm -hmm. to provide a more holistic approach mm -hmm. is more important for solving some of these bigger issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Which this goes back to the task force um, that Louis was mentioning uh, happening at the county board level. I believe you can find that information on the county board website um, and look through the different priorities and how those dollars, the different camps that those dollars will be able to move into. Um, and that that is a very unique. The people that are serving on those task forces, you know, I they're the right people in the right seat on the bus. So um, it's exciting to see. Yeah, wonderful. Well, um, in lieu of wrap up, I just have. One simple question to ask you guys, just about you personally. If you have a favorite way that you personally um, have volunteered in the past, a consistent way you love to volunteer, just a favorite memory of a way that you've gotten in on some of the great work. I know I mentioned my time at Camp Evelyn during um, Day of Caring. Um, I had a sore back for a day or two, but it was an absolute <laughs> blast. Do you guys have any volunteer um, favorites, highlights? I can go first. Yeah. Okay. So when I first moved to Sheboygan, I um, was a volunteer with Meals on Wheels. Mm. And so I remember, this was back when it was at Watson's Vending, and I remember pulling into that parking lot to pick up my meal for the first time and just amazed at 
all of the people that were there to help serve and that it happened every day that all of these volunteers would come to pick up meals, to deliver mm -hmm. them throughout Sheboygan County. It floored me mm -hmm. when I went the very first time. And as my children were growing older, I would bring them with me to mm -hmm. serve and deliver Meals on Wheels. And that was just a really amazing experience too and got me out into the community and seeing parts of Sheboygan County that mm -hmm. I would have otherwise not seen. So for me, um, being a part of Meals on Wheels was really um, impactful yeah. for me and for my family. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I volunteer, we were talking about this earlier, I volunteer at St. Nicholas Hospital as a Eucharistic minister. And so each week, uh, I, every Monday, I go to all the patients that wish to have communion. Um, and give them communion. And it's an amazing ministry. Mm -hmm. You see people oftentimes at their worst, mm -hmm. and um, and they want someone to listen to. They're lonely, mm -hmm. and they're in need, and they're scared, and, um, and you're there, mm -hmm. and you're present with them. So that's, and there's countless stories but mm -hmm. that's that's probably the one I cherish the most yeah I I've been like kind of scratching my head here uh, there's there's a I guess a number of different moments but I I think the one that I it could be serving on a board that I you know I'm passionate about and seeing the great work that that they can do um, I go back to the the serving a meal to somebody who um, maybe is going to go without it, it to me is just because it's so basic it's just at such a fundamental level and you know handing you know the the individual a tray or scooping you know some mashed potatoes on a plate for them um has just been oftentimes that is it's just so eye-opening um because you're seeing it kind of right there mm -hmm. um and my children have had the opportunity to kind of do that as well and and i just uh um, I think uh, that's probably the most memorable, but then that kind of spins into, you know, the work that I've done in working with Patrick um, at the Sheboygan County Food Bank to mm -hmm. see, you know, where that organization has come has been, um, has been really mm -hmm. kind of neat. It's yeah. been neat to see. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for your time, for your investment in today and the work that you do day in and day out. Um, to serve Sheboygan County and your fellow colleagues and um, just very, very grateful for the leadership role that you play. So thank you for this time. Um, thank you to all of you who are able to join us and for those online. Um, this has been an absolute joy. Um, I know we have Mayor Sorensen who wanted to uh, say hello and, and a little something. Uh, Mayor Sorensen, thank you for letting us into your living room today. <laughs> we appreciate this space and yeah, the opportunity living to be room, together. Living room, bedroom, bathroom. <laughs> A <laughs> little bit of everything. Um, I just wanted to pop over and just say hello to everybody and thank you so much and welcome you to City Hall. Um, it's always great to see some familiar and friendly faces here too. Um, I think this is just a true reflection of what we want our new, relatively new City Hall uh, to be, to be more of a community center, bring folks uh, from, from the community in here just to mm -hmm. see um, what our community is all about. Mm -hmm. I think the, the great work that the United Way does um, and every single work that, that, that you all do makes an impact on our community. So I just mm -hmm. want to say thank you so much. Um, if you ever have any future meetings or get-togethers or panels or anything that you'd like, uh, please reach out. We'd be happy to host you here at City Hall. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow. With that, we are going to wrap up and would like to give you back one minute of your Tuesday. So <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you, John. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. I'm not going to win for office or anything. No. <laughs>